you're frustrated and angry at yourself because you won't take action. You want something more, you maybe you want more income, maybe you want better relationships, better health, more freedom, more fun, but you just keep doing the same old stuff and you just keep getting the same old results. And the thing is, you know that if you don't start to make some kind of change soon, before you know it, you're gonna wake up one day and realize that it's too late. Now, 75% of the world's population are gonna be in that exact space. We know it, statistics tell us that it's true. Lots of people want to have more, but for whatever reason, they just never go out and get it and they live this life that feels caged, at best, comfortable. They feel unfulfilled, but they feel comfortably numb. And it's what I wanna teach you in this session today is how we can use a framework, which I've just drawn out for you here, called the Comfort Learning Matrix. How can we use that to start getting ourselves out of that state of apathy or anxiety and moving into a state where we're like the victor of our life? No longer the victim, we're working out what do we need to do and how can we start making change from today? Now listen, I wanna let you know that I don't say this lightly. I lived this life for around about 40 years. Jeff Olson describes it fabulously in The Slight Edge. He says that most people oscillate between failure and survival over and over again. Literally this wave of feeling like a failure, doing something to survive, plopping back down into failure, and most people will live their life like that. And whilst to everybody else who knows me, they might see me as somebody who has always been a bit of a risk taker. There was a period of my life for around 10 years when I first had my children that I didn't even know what day of the week it was most of the time. I suffered with horrendous depression. I wasn't a very nice person. I didn't even know how to get through the end of the day. That was my only goal, like I just need to get to the end of the day. And even when I first started my business, which was a complete accident in 2012, I had to start a business because me and my husband were in huge amounts of debt and we'd given back a house because we couldn't afford to keep it. And we had six years to get ourselves out of that mess. And so it was born from necessity. But even then, I found that all the, all the things that I did were very much from a space of reaction and desperation rather than a choice to make my life better. It was almost a case of, well, why not? I was very rebellious. Why not just do that? And it took me nearly 40 years to realize that I had a choice, that I could choose to create the life that I wanted. And that's what makes me so passionate about what I teach today. And so today I wanna go through, I've got some great notes here for you. And I wanna tell you what happened and how you can do the same thing, where you can make a fundamental shift to your thinking so that you're actually, you're the, you're the architect of your life. You're the sculptor, the creator. You're the person that says, this is what I want. Now let me work out how I can architect that. And so I've got three steps for you to do today. Now the first thing that I wanna to say to you is that for those of you that say it's okay for you because, I want you to just wipe that story from your mind completely. Because if you really wanted to find out you know, how much people can change, you can go to some of the top thought leaders in this industry today and listen to their stories. None of them were born with a silver spoon. None of them had it easy. None of them were an overnight success. Lots of them have been either completely broke or on the streets. And so we call that, that whole sort of cognitive dissonance thing. Like you've, you've got to get over the fact that whatever anybody else has done, you are perfectly capable of doing. So wherever you're at right now, on whatever excuses you're giving yourselves why you can't change, please just listen on and just see if you can take one thing from what I'm about to teach you today. Now, the first thing before I go into the first teaching point is that the thought of change for most of us, doesn't matter how far down the line we are, initiate some form of anxiety, some kind of fear pattern. It activates this part in our brain called like the conflict center, like, ooh, I kind of know I want to change, but ooh, I kind of know that's going to hurt. And you know what? None of us want to feel discomfort. We're not wired for that. There's all kinds of evolutionary things that says when we feel discomfort, we feel unsafe. And your ego, your, your evolutionary self will try and drag you back and say, let's just stay here because we know that we're safe here. And so we have to learn to how can we flip that so that in terms of, the, of this triangle right here, we've got low comfort and high comfort here. We can move away from our desire for high comfort 
and we can start to embrace the low comfort. We can start to deactivate this conflict center where those conversations start going off in your head about why you should be much better off staying where you are. So the first question I've got to ask you is this one here. What can you do right now to release some of that anxiety? Okay, now there are some basic state changes that you could do. So you could literally leave the room that you, the, 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 the thoughts started coming up in, the anxiousness started to come up in. Go outside, ground yourself, put your feet on the floor. You could start taking some deep breaths. I love the four, seven, eight meditation. You can find that on YouTube. Or even just, you know, five to 10 deep calming breaths. I like to just go lay on the floor in my kitchen. And just the dog normally comes and lays next to me. And I just lay there and just breathe. Like, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm still here. I'm surviving. It's just a thought process. Because you can do things like that. Um, you could even kind of like go do a brain dump. You could get your journal and just brain dump all the stuff that comes out. We just want to challenge or deactivate the internal chatter, knowing that it's a very normal process, but we don't need to buy into it. So the first thing you want to do is, what can you do to release anxiety that comes up when you think about creating some kind of change? Now, the next thing that I find really interesting is, what assumptions do you need to challenge before you can start taking action? So I've, again, I've written some examples down here. So initially, the, the things that might start to come up is, I don't know how to do that. I don't have the resources to do that. I don't have the support to do that. No one's gonna help me. I'm gonna fail. This is gonna be too painful for me. I don't have enough time. It's gonna take too long. It's gonna be too hard. People are gonna laugh at me. Again, we're listening to the stories. This whole week, we've been in the different YouTube videos, we've been talking to you about the stories that we tell ourselves that either feed that internal identity that's, that continually creates the same outcome for you, or we can start to create a new reality. We can architect a new identity, take action from that new identity, and watch as that repetition over time, consistently creates a whole new internal sort of calibration, and then our whole reality externally starts to mirror that. Because remember, your reality is a mirror for your internal frequency, okay? So what assumptions are you making that you need to challenge before you can start thinking about taking action? So again, journal this out. What, uh, what's the internal conversation? What assumptions are you making that you need to have a little conversation about before you can even start to think about taking an action? Now, when you've done that, what you've done effectively is you've like, ugh, you've outloaded. Like you've put things on paper. You've had a look at the conversation. Hopefully you've seen that some of the conversation makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. And that the only way you're gonna sort of to, to make that change is to start taking some form of action. So the third step is, what's one thing that you can do now that either A, will move you away from where you are, or B, will move you towards a more positive, a more resourceful, a happier outcome? And I use those because you probably know this, half of us are running away from something, and half of us are running towards something. Now, I truly believe that for a lot of us, we start by running away, right? We start by running away. Because here's my perception on this. Sometimes when we get so engulfed in where we wanna go, we don't often spend enough time getting context of where we are. And so where we wanna go seems so far away, so out of our reach, so for somebody else and not for us, that we can never break that middle ground because it feels like it's just too far away. So sometimes we have to get really honest about what is it that I'm trying to really get away from. And for so many of us, it's that suffocating feeling of what if this never changes? What if I live this same life year after year after year? And let me tell you as well, this doesn't mean to say that you're not grateful. It doesn't mean to say that you might have an amazing home. I have an amazing home. I have an amazing husband. I have gorgeous children. I'm very blessed to still have my, my parents here. Um, I've got money in the bank. I do a lot of traveling, right? But there's still a whole heap more for me to experience. And my biggest fear is getting to the end of my days and knowing that there was more in my tank and I didn't access it because I was scared or because I was lazy or because I didn't ask for help. 
So the, all this, this question here is really about asking you to decide where you want to be on this matrix. Because you can see here, where we're in this, this space of sort of low learning, actually I want to, yeah, so low learning, uh, low comfort and low learning, we feel stuck. We're not moving anywhere. When we can accept low comfort, so we're not very comfortable, but we can take high learning, we give ourselves permission to start to fly. But because we know that we immediately access this kind of conflict center and all these things are going off in your head like a pinball machine telling you why you shouldn't do it, 95% of the world stay comfortably numb, comfortably safe, comfortably living the same day, day in, day out. Les Brown says it beautifully. Les Brown says most people die at 25, they just don't get buried till they're 65 because they live the same year year in, year out, <gasps> biggest fear of mine. But it took me 40 years to get there. And I'm 45 next month. So the journey that I've taken in the last five years has been insane because I realized that the fundamental truth is that my life is a reflection of what I choose to believe, who I choose to be, and then the actions that come off the back of that. So just to kind of re reiterate that for you, number one, I want you to think about what can you do to reduce some of the anxiety around the, the, the initial things that start to happen when you think about the change. How can you reduce the anxiety? Can you change the room? Can you change the thinking? Can you take a deep breath? Can you slap yourself around the face? Can you phone a friend? You know, what can you do? Number two, what assumptions are you making that you need to challenge before you can take action? So your time, your resources, your ability, your desires, the length of time it's gonna take, the support that you're gonna get, ooh, do I deserve it? And the third thing is, what could you do now? One simple step that you could do now that would move you either A, away from a current situation that you really don't like, or B, something you can move towards where you wanna go. And for some of you, it could be as simple as, I'm just going to walk for five minutes a day so that I can, I can improve my fitness and, and start to feel better about myself. For some of you, if you're in business, it might be that you know you just need to kind of add 10% on your prices, or you need to, some of you might wanna think, okay, eventually I know I need to close this business down. So what I'm gonna start doing, I'm gonna stop advertising, right? But so it's it just write all this stuff down and then just pick one of them and then just start doing it because you change your reality through repetition of new behavior. As you repeat new behavior and you work on the subconscious and the identity, literally your life will transform. So I really hope, you've, that was my favorite one of this week, so I hope you've enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, please subscribe and hit the bell so you get notified of the three videos every week that I'm putting up for you. And please share, because as we all start to become architects of our life and we raise the consciousness of the planet, we will change the world. And we can all do that by choosing to create our lives of purpose, passion, and profit.